Hey guys, this is Unit 3, Lesson 3, Drawing in Game Lab. The computer science standards for this one are decompose problems and subproblems into parts to facilitate the design, implementation, and review of programs, and document programs in order to make them easier to follow, test, and debug. Our essential question for the day is how can we communicate to a computer how to draw shapes on the screen? This entire lesson is on code.org. Make sure you are signed in on code.org with your school Google account. Your grade for this lesson will be based on your programming in the lesson on code.org. Watching this video is mandatory. Watch the video as you work your way through the lesson on code.org. And the best practice is to watch me do a step in the video, pausing the video, and then completing that step on code.org. Repeat until finished. So let's go ahead and go to code.org. This puts us on our dashboard. I'm already signed in up here. If you're not signed in, remember to use the Google login with your school account. And I'm going to go straight into unit three, animation and games. We did chapter one, images and animations. You'll notice as you're working your way through these lessons, like we've already done lesson one, so all of these bubbles are green. I can toggle these, I'm already done with uh, lesson one. Lesson two, we are skipping. So if you have a question about whether or not we're doing lesson two, I know you didn't watch what? You didn't watch what? You didn't watch my video. All right. Skipping lesson two, going straight to lesson three, bubble one. And uh, we've got some vocab to go over. A bug in programming is part of a program that does not work correctly. So when I say a, a program has a bug in it, I'm saying that it has a hitch in its step, right? It has an issue with the actual programming language and the code itself causing the program to not work correctly. Debugging is finding and fixing the bugs in an algorithm or program so that it does work correctly. And then the program itself is an algorithm that has been coded into something that can be run by a machine. That machine being, in our case, the computer. Uh, new code, we're gonna learn today, we're gonna learn fill color, we're gonna learn the ellipse, which is uh, a piece of code that makes circles, and then the rect or rectangle block, which makes squares. So let's continue. And hitting continue will take us to bubble two, and we are now in what is called Game Lab. Game Lab is where we will be doing all of our programming for unit three, and Game Lab is where we can. Uh, look at our toolbox, look at our workspace, fix our version history, run our programs, see what's going on with everything in here. You can also toggle here between uh, showing the block JavaScript coding and showing the text of JavaScript coding. You can always toggle back and forth between those. You feel free to uh, use the text-based programming, but I'm going to be teaching everything in the blocks so if you decide that you want to do it all via text, that is fine, but uh, you know, it might be a little bit more of a challenge. So let's get in here. Let's explore Game Lab and see what all we can do with this. So <clears throat> it says, welcome to Game Lab, where you can create interactive animations and games. You've already practiced the basics of putting shapes on a grid, in Game Lab, you'll do the same with the display area on the left. And this is our display area on the left. It says, do this. Look at the line of code in the workspace below. This is our workspace. This is the line of code it's talking about. So look at the line of code in the workspace below these instructions. Show me where. Here's the code. Click that X. And Let's see where we think that shape will be drawn on the grid. So let's turn our grid, let's turn our grid on. Off, on, off, on. Okay, 
Now we know how that works. Okay, so just a reminder, quick refresher. Zero, zero on our game lab grid starts up here in the top left corner. The X axis is left and right. The Y axis is up and down. So paying attention to these numbers that show up down here as I'm moving my cursor around. So, it, so it, this rectangle it's going to draw is going to be at 100, 100. So where do we think it's going to appear on the grid? Maybe at 100, 100? So I think that this rectangle is going to show up like right here somewhere. So let's click Run. And we were right. So now it says, yeah, click Run. We did that. Change the numbers inside the block. And then try running the program again. Try to place the rectangle near the bottom right of the screen. So let's reset. So leaving our grid up there, we're going to change these numbers within this JavaScript block. And we want to get it down on the bottom right. So I'm going to say, and for a, a rectangle block, the numbers indicated here are going to place the top left corner of that block or that uh, rectangle or square at the top left of the square itself. So I want it to be at 350, 350. So I'm going to click in there, type in 350, and then I can use my tab key to move over to the other one, or you can just click in between them and type in. So 350, 350, I changed it. So let's run that code. And now our square or rectangle is down here in the bottom right. Finish, continue. All right, bubble three, we're gonna watch this video together. I'm Amara, I'm a student at Dartmouth College and I love to code and dance. People always thought I was good with technical stuff with computers and phones, and then I did Girls Who Code. And yeah, seeing other girls interested and realizing that it was more accessible than I think I thought was a good gateway into computer science. Welcome to Game Lab. Game Lab is a tool that lets you draw pictures, design animations, and build your own games with code. To create these animations and games, you'll be learning and using the programming language JavaScript. GameLab is designed with the beginning programmer in mind, but it also includes many powerful features to help you bring your creations to life. Let's get started! In GameLab, you can add lines of code to your program by dragging blocks out from the toolbox and snapping them together. Then click the Run button to see the result. The output of the program will show up on the left in the display area. If you prefer, you can also type the commands yourself. Either way you write your code, you can always flip between block mode and text mode. In fact, you can work in text mode and drag blocks out to insert the text. If you make an error, you can use the blocks as a way to check if it's the right command. If you want to get rid of a line of code, just drag the block off the screen. You can also delete it from the text. To start out, you'll be drawing with simple shapes like rectangles and ellipses. That's a fancy name for an oval. To change where shapes show up on the screen, you can change the numbers given to each command. The first two numbers set the position of the shape. The last two numbers change the size. Let's check out an example where we want to move our rectangle down the screen and then make it wider. In Game Lab, the X and Y position starts at the top left corner. If we want to move the rectangle down the screen, we actually need to increase the Y value. To make the rectangle wider, we'll also need to increase its width. Learning how to use new commands doesn't have to be trial and error. If you hover over any of the blocks, you can read more about how to use it and see detailed examples of each command. I don't know what I want to do after college, but I know that computer science will give me a lot of opportunities to work in many different industries, which is why I like it so much. All right, let's click the orange continue button and that will put us on the next bubble which is bubble four. And like we learned in the video, we learned that 
this is our display area. This is our toolbox. This is our workspace. And in our toolbox area, we can pull out, we can throw it away. And it's important to remember, and you can kind of cheat with your eyes a little bit, that on this block, the X value is that first value or this 100 and the Y value is this 100. So X value, Y value. And, and this is just placing the square where we want it to go on the display area. Place squares in corners. A big part of using Game Lab is understanding position. Remember, you can always turn on the grid or hover with the mouse to help find the X and Y position you want. Do this. Place two rectangles exactly in the corners of the screen, just like in the picture over here. So we want one in the top left and one in the bottom right. So let's run and see what's going on. That's nowhere near what we want. So first off, we want two squares on here. And if I want this x and y value to show up or make my square show up here, then I need it to be 0, 0. And if I want my second block to be down here, then I want it to be 350 and 350. So let's run that. And it's exactly what we wanted. And we can turn off the grid, and it looks just like our picture over here. So let's finish. Let's go to bubble five. Bubble five, another video. So far, you've only been drawing gray colored shapes. Let's throw some color into these shapes to make them more interesting. Every shape has two elements that can be colored, a stroke and a fill. The stroke is the border of the shape. The fill is the color inside the shape. At any point, you can change the color used to draw the stroke or fill of the shape. For example, here we'll change the fill to be the color green before drawing a rectangle. If you draw more rectangles after setting the fill color, they'll also be green. Until you change the fill color, Game Lab will continue to draw shapes in the color that you set. The same applies for the stroke of your shapes. If you don't want your shapes to have a stroke or a fill, you can use the no stroke or no fill commands to make it so. The order of commands matters a lot in Game Lab. You need to change the color of your stroke or fill before you draw the shape. If you were drawing or painting in real life, this would be like dipping your paintbrush into your palette before drawing on the canvas. There's lots of other commands you can use to create interesting and complex drawings. As you get more familiar with all the drawing tools available in Game Lab, you'll get better at bringing your ideas to life. Happy drawing! All right, so let's continue on to the next bubble. Bubble six. Okay, fill color. So we're learning how to use that fill color block she was just talking about in that video. So you can also make your rectangles different colors with fill. It will set the color for every shape that comes after it in the code. Do this. Look at the code that sets the color. And this is another cool trick I'm going to show you. So if you want more room to, to work with in your workspace, you can move that around. Just put your cursor there until you see the double up and down arrow, and you can move that around a little bit. So I'm going to move that until I can see just the do this part, because this is telling me the directions. Look at the code that sets the color. Show me where. OK, it's that uh, piece of code on line one. All right, so change the color from blue to yellow. To do that, we can select this little down arrow and we're going to select yellow. And then it says add a new square by dragging a rectangle block into the code area below the fill command. Show me where. Over here. All right, that's my rectangle block. The new square can go to any location on the screen that you like. All right. 
So if I run this, there should be three yellow squares. Okay, cool. So I kind of want to imitate what this diagram is showing me. So I'm going to turn on my grid and I want to put my x at w x at 100 and y at 200 for this one. So let's fix that 100 and 200 reset and run. And if I turn my grid off, it looks just like the picture over here. Cool. All right. And it looks like my fill yellow block up here is changing the color of everything below it. Neat. Level seven. Order matters. In Game Lab, it matters what order your code is in. New shapes are drawn on top of the ones that came before, covering up the shapes that are drawn first. You can see the difference when you use more than one color in your code. Do this. All right, let's move this up. Look at the code that draws the two rectangles. The first is drawn red and the second is drawn blue. Okay, let's run it. Okay, I see the red one and I see the blue one. Change the red rectangles color to green. So let's change the red one to green and change the order of the code so the green rectangle appears on top. Okay, so let's reset and run, make sure that's green, it is. So I need to make sure the green one is on top. So to do that, I'm going to rearrange my code here. So one thing to understand is that the computer reads this in order, so it's gonna draw in order too. So in order to get it to draw the blue square before it draws the green square to put the blue square on the bottom of the green one to make sure that the green ring rectangle appears on top. I want the computer to read it in this order so it draws the blue one first. Perfect, right? Looks just like the picture up there. Bubble eight. On bubble eight, we're learning about ellipses. You can use the ellipse to make a circle. Okay, do this. Look at the code that makes the ellipse. Add a new ellipse of a different color. So here's my code that makes the ellipse. And then this first one's going to appear as teal, like that up there. So run. Okay, cool. And I need to add an ellipse of a different color. So the first thing I want to add is this fill yellow. So I'm gonna drag that out of my toolbox. And then I, you can choose a different color if you want to. I'm gonna leave it yellow so it matches my design up here. And then I wanna grab the ellipse block, put that on line four. I'm gonna leave it at 200, 200, run it. There we go. So finish. Moving on to bubble nine. On bubble nine, we've got a few options here. I am going to debug the spot stoplight. You can choose a different one if you want, but in this video, we're gonna be doing debug a stoplight. So uh, from this, whenever you come to a bubble like this one, where you get some options, you choose from the following activities where you can debug a car, debug a flower, debug a stoplight. To get to it, we will just click it. And it says debugging, fix the stoplight. This stoplight is all mixed up. Fix it so that it looks like the picture on the right, okay? Do this, read the code that makes the stoplight and change the code so that the colors are correct. All right, so let's move that out of the way. And I just want to be able to see the stoplight example here. So if I run this, oh yeah, that's all out of whack. Okay, so let's see. If I want, okay, so the rectangles are being made here, those gray rectangles. I'm going to turn the grid on. And I want those to be black. So if I want those to be black, I need the fill color to be up above it. Okay, so that worked, but then my 
circle disappeared. So, ah, because it's turning this ellipse black. You see that? So I need to take this fill red block and put that on line five. If, now if I run it, okay. But it's turning both of these red. So I need to take this yellow and put that on line seven. Reset and run. And I was turning both of these yellow. So I take the green, put that on line nine. Reset, run. Okay, cool. Got it. Okay. So if you did this correctly, you should have fill black on line one, your three rectangles on lines two, three, two through four in the code, fill red on line five, this ellipse on line six, fill yellow on line seven, this ellipse on line eight, fill green on line nine, and on line 10, finally, this ellipse 200, 225. And that makes our stoplight. Sweet. On to bubble 10. Let's, let's finish. You can continue doing practices if you want to. Uh, debugging the flower, debugging the car. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. I'm only going to require that you choose one of those. So on to bubble 10. Debugging. Often code doesn't work the first time it runs and programmers have to debug it. The code below is supposed to make the picture on the right, but the programmer got confused about which order the code should be in, as well as how to put a square in the right place on the screen. So here's the image we're gonna to try to make. It's like a flower with a square purple center. Weird, okay, whatever, uh, do this. Look at the code in the workspace, okay? Change the code so that it makes the picture on the right, which is this guy right here. And you'll need to move one line of code and change the coordinates of the square. Okay, so that's a good hint. I'm gonna pull that back down so I can see this. So let's run it first. Oh yeah, okay, so we gotta change the color of the square. Uh, we can do that easily. So we take fill purple from line seven, move that up to line one, reset run. All right, but now we need to change the order that it appears. We wanna draw our circles before, before we draw the square. So let's grab this, pull that all the way down, grab the right, whoop, sorry about that. Grab the rectangle, pull that all the way down. So now it's drawing it in the right order, but we need to change the location of the square. So let's move the square to where it needs to be, which is right here. So let's find that 150, 150 instead of 175, 175 should do it. Get out of my way. Reset, run. Beautiful. All right, cool. It's exactly what we want. Finish. We're on bubble 11. The final bubble. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, let's see. So which challenge do we want to do? Do we want to... Let's do the face. Let's do the face challenge. You guys can do whichever you want to do in here, but we're going to do the, I'm going to do the face challenge. Okay. Write a program that uses rectangle, ellipse, and fill to create the face on the right. The colors used are light blue, red, and light green. Once you've finished, add your own personal touches to the image. Um, okay. So I want to put some ellipses on here for those circles, these two for the eyes. And I don't want them to be right there. And I need to change the color. It said to use light blue. Okay, so type that in there. Make sure those quotation marks are still around it when you type that in, otherwise it won't work. And I want to put those, let's show the grid. Let's put an eye at 
uh, let's say 125, 125, and 275, 125. So we decided 125, 12, whoops, 125. Let's run that. Okay, cool. Reset, and then we wanted the other one to be at 275, 125. And what I'm doing with this, remember this is the x-axis, so this is telling it where to be left and right. And this is the y-axis, so this is telling it to be where to be up and down. So if I run that, I've got my circles in the right spots where I want them to be. So now I wanna do another ellipse. This time I want it to be red. And this one I want to be right in the center. I like where that is, cool. So reset. And then I need to make the smile. So let's do four. And we're gonna do light green. We need four rectangle blocks. There we go. Okay. And our four rectangle blocks are on lines seven through 10. If I run it, they're all right there stacked on top of each other in one spot. I don't want them to be right there. I want them to be like through here. So I want my first one, let's say at 125, 230. Set run. Okay. Let's move him over to the left a little bit further. Let's do 100, 230. Cool. I like that. And then the next one, let's put down here on this line. We'll do right there 150, 250. So run, perfect. And then let's do this next one right next to it. So we'll put him at 200, 250. So I just need to change this one. Reset, run, good. And then the next one I kind of want up. So we'll do, uh, let's see, how far over is that, 250. And we'll match it up with this 230. So 250, 230. Whoop, reset. 250, 230. Run. Beautiful. I've got a smiley face. It doesn't look exactly like this one, but I like it. The eyes are a little bit wider set. That's okay. All right. That's it, folks. When you finish this one or one of the other challenges, just click finish, and that will finish lesson three drawing in Game Lab for you. Thanks, guys.